What's going on, world? I just got home from the gym. It's about 3.30 right now. I stopped eating last night right around 9.30, 10 o'clock. So I'm sitting right around 17 to 18 hours completely fasted. To be honest, last night I completely forgot to check the clock when I stopped eating. So I'm just guessing that is around the time that I stopped. So yeah, like I said, 17 to, 7, 17 to 18 hours completely fasted right now. I just got home from the gym, feeling that nice pump going right now. I picked up a 12 inch honey oat turkey with double meat, and I'm about to make one of my fruit smoothies up here because right now I am currently prepping for my one year transformation photos. Now, I tend to stay quite lean year round, as you'll see here, like I have abs, I have, veins year round because in my view with intermittent fasting you really don't need to bulk to put on noticeable muscle mass and that is the whole point of these one year transformation photos so I want to show you guys that all year round I was managing to stay right around 8 to 10 percent body fat while I was able to put on noticeable muscle mass year after year after year and that is one of my long-term experiments, is trying to prove that intermittent fasting works. So today is July 6th. Usually around the end of July, I get my one-year transformation photos done. So I have about three more weeks to prepare. So over this 30-day uh, vlog challenge, one of the things that you guys are gonna be seeing is how I prep and prepare for my one-year transformation photos. Now what I like to do is I like to get myself nice and tan so I am the same color year after year after year and that way you know there's it's not going to be a matter of lighting or a matter of my skin color because I try to make every year as consistent as possible. I try to take the pictures around the same time when the sun is in the sky and around the same time every year just so that I can learn for myself and I can see for myself and I'm keeping something that is very documented and thorough. So over these next 30 days there, I'm gonna take you guys through me prepping for that. I'm gonna show you guys the types of foods that I'm eating, when I'm eating them with intermittent fasting, and I'm going back to tracking all my food for this month. So if you guys are interested in the description box below, there is my my fitness pal account. I really suggest following me along so that way you guys can see and get an idea of, you know, okay, so he's eating this much food every day or he's eating this much food on this day and that's how many calories and how many macros, how much protein, carbs, fat is in all that food and that way you guys can get an idea of what's going on with your lifestyle and in your body right now my goal is to shoot for around 22 to 2300 calories every single day I'm trying to put myself in a caloric deficit so I want my body to be cutting fat on a daily basis because of my caloric intake along with that along with the intermittent fasting that is going to help the fat loss process then then, like how I usually do, I will spike it up with a cheat day. So usually I go for about four to seven days of eating in a caloric deficit and eating clean, healthy foods. And then I'll spike it up with a cheat day just to restock all my glycogen levels and refill my body to where it needs to be. So because this month I'm trying to shred down, I'm only going to have about one to two cheat days. So that is something I'm going to take you guys through as well there. Uh, they won't be extremely excessive cheat days, but I'm definitely going to be going into a high caloric surplus and enjoying the foods that I, I like to eat and that I enjoy because over this next, like I'm going to go for 10 days right now. My goal is to go 10 days of eating clean, healthy foods in a caloric deficit. Now I do have to manipulate some things like some people might say this 12 inch turkey with double meat is technically not healthy because of GMOs and blah, 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 this and blah, 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 that. I have to sacrifice because of my lifestyle, because I'm putting everything into a short window because of my finances, because of YouTube and editing and all this kind of stuff. I have to structure my lifestyle in a particular way. Doesn't mean it's the most optimal way, but 
I have a goal right now and I'm trying to optimize my life factors to meet that goal. So you guys are gonna get a nice rundown over these next 30 days of what I'm doing and why so I can get the results on my body. Over this last year, I really haven't been using my fitness pal at all. I've just been guesstimating as I said earlier. And like I said, as you can see, like I stay quite lean year round. Uh, after using my fitness pal for a good five to six months, I really learned portion sizes. I can just eyeball food now. I can eyeball a bunch of chicken, a bunch of steak, a bunch of rice, and I can get a very good estimate of the macros and the calories. I want to get back onto my fitness pal because I am coaching several people right now and I'm trying to get them involved in my fitness pal and get them tracking their own food and having their own understanding of what's going on when they're looking at food and to try to figure it out in their heads. So this right here, I already know, this is right around 700 to 715, 750 calories, sorry. My fruit smoothie that I'm gonna make here, it's gonna be around another 700 calories. So right there, my first meal, that is gonna be a block of around 1400 to 1500 calories. Then, I just need another seven to 800 calories to fill myself out for the rest of the day and I'm done. My whole goal is I'm not worrying too, too much about macro ranges. I am trying to get in an optimal dosage. So I am shooting for at least 120 to 160 grams of protein. I'm shooting for 200 to 300 carbs and around 30 to 60 fat. So as I said there, those ranges are very broad. They're very wide because in my opinion, the macro ranges, although it's important to get healthy amounts of macros and to fluctuate those throughout the week, I don't really think it's necessary that you need to be so strict with your macronutrient ranges, especially if only your goal is to cut some fat. So I'm not worrying too, too much about my macro ranges. I'm trying to hit certain range levels, but my biggest thing that I'm worrying about is my caloric intake. So I'm trying to shoot, as I said earlier, for 22 to 2300 calories every single day. I believe from stepping on the scale, from seeing on my own body and see, watching my fat levels over these last few years that 2200 to 2300 calories puts me in that caloric deficit every single day. So that is what I'm shooting for. I got some food here. I'm gonna take you through my first day of prepping for the one year transformation photos. 17 and a half hours completely fasted, time to eat. Well. It's a beauty day in London. Let's soak up some of that free vitamin D. Murphy, come on. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Who's a boy? Come here. Hey, no, don't lick my smoothie. Come here. Yeah. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so while I was out there, I, uh, added this up on my fitness pal here. So right now, the turkey with double meat, the mangoes, the bananas, and the frozen uh, berries there, I'm sitting around, right around 1300 calories. And we'll go take a look at the macronutrients here as well. So I'm sitting about 65 protein, 239 carbs, and about 14 fat. So as of right now, just by looking at that, I've got a substantial amount of my carbs in right now because of all that fruit. I got a decent amount of protein because of the turkey on the sub, and I just have a little bit of fat. So my next meal, I should be considering having like a type of meat or something higher in protein, higher in fat, but low in carbs if I want to hit those ranges that I was discussing earlier. So how did I come up with these? How did I figure this out? So as I showed you guys downstairs, I weighed out all my meal stuff as you see here it's in cups instead of grams you're going to have this is very important that if you know some of these restaurants or some of these places that you frequently go to don't have something on my fitness pal and this is something that you regularly do you regularly eat you can go on their website find out exactly the calorie ranges the exact protein the exact carbs the exact fat 
make it one of your foods on my fitness pal and then it's always available for you then it's quick and easy you just got to press one button or you develop that knowledge you keep it in your head and then you can understand then you don't need to type it anymore but that like I said it takes some time to get to that level so it's a beauty day outside right now it's a little it's a little cloudy like there's some uh, it's very hazy out right now and it's very humid it's very like sticky out here but I need to get ready for these one-year transformation photos so I need a little bit more color so I'll see you guys in a bit here holy crap I almost forgot to take my vitamins and creatine Back to work. Later. Just 10 minutes before 9 o'clock there. I got a solid two to about two and a half hours worth of editing all done and complete. So I got a couple videos ready to go for you guys here for this 30 day vlog experiment. And then I ran off to Farm Boy real quick because I needed some fresh veggies and stuff. So I got a nice big ass salad ready to go here. I prepared that all up. In here I have some spring mix. I also got some romaine. I'm experimenting with volumizing my salads a bit, so I got a whole head of romaine lettuce in there. I also have a bunch of mushrooms, some uh, sliced up carrots, I got some tomatoes, some pickles, and I also have uh, like a bunch of trail mix in there. Got some nuts and pumpkin seeds and dried out cranberries and everything. So I'm gonna munch this all up while I prep up my next meal there and yeah, I'm just gonna take you guys through the journey. So I'll take you guys through my second and possibly last meal of the day here. some of my creamy scrambled eggs with a couple slices of pumpernickel bread and a whole avocado and I'm pretty much done my big ass bowl of salad there just about got another quarter or so to go and now if you guys are wondering these scrambled eggs are the best scrambled eggs and why because they're creamy I uh I always used to hate eggs, especially scrambled eggs, fried eggs, just because it, it had this like chewy, rubbery taste to it. So I wanted to learn and experiment with eggs and try to get it more into my diet because it's a great source of fat and a great source of protein. So I stumbled upon a YouTube video by Chef Gordon Ramsay and he shows himself making up a, a batch of this, the creamiest scrambled eggs ever. Now he does add some like, actual cream or milk to it but I basically took his technique and put a little spin on it so if you guys are interested you want to know how to make your own creamy scrambled eggs make sure you go check out the video that I'll pop up right here I uh, it was one of my very first few videos so I was still so awkward and so weird in front of the camera so guys please go to that video and go leave me a comment and let me know how stupid and silly you think I look but it is just about 9.30 there, and this is gonna be my last meal for the day. I'm going to be completely done after this. So I started at around 3.30, I started my eating window, and I'm gonna finish it right around 9.30 here. So that's only about six hours of eating, which is one of my typical days of intermittent fasting. So a great start to my 
first official day of tracking all my food and being very considerate of my food and uh, the portion sizes and everything. So I'm gonna show you guys my fitness pal here and I'll show you where I left off for the day in terms of caloric intake and macro ranges. So we have here the turkey with double meat, all the fruit and the fruit smoothie there, the pumpernickel bread, the avocado, and the five eggs that I use to make these creamy scrambled eggs. And that's putting me at 2,219 calories for the day. Let's go check out my nutrition and macro ranges here. So quite low on the protein, only 109 for protein, very high in the carbs, 320 and about 65 fat. So today I learned something, you know, like I haven't been eating like this in a, a little while. And <clears throat> because of my work schedule, I've been changing things around. So it's very rare that I'll have bread later at night. Usually right now I would have made up some potatoes or something else, but it was getting a little late into the day. And I wanted to keep my eating window short for today. So instead of cutting up potatoes, cooking them, I was just like, screw it, I'm just gonna eat some bread and that'll cover me and and that will cover me for my carbs for that meal. So a little high on the carbs, a little low on the protein, my fat ranges were right where I wanted it to be. So just gonna make sure that tomorrow's even better. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope you guys are ready for my one year transformation photos. This is something I've been working very hard for. These are one of my long term experiments that goes on for not even just a whole year. This is I've been doing intermittent fasting for over five years now. Five years of doing intermittent fasting without more than two to three days of enjoying myself and having maybe like I'm on a vacation, like when I went to Cedar Point, I just kind of let it loose. So two or three days here and there. But besides that, I haven't gotten more than like four days to a week of eating six to eight small meals. It's always been intermittent fasting. I've typically always been in about 17 all the way up to a 24 sometimes even 40 hours 48 hour fasts i have huge cheat days so what i'm trying to show on my body and through these one year transformation photos is that life doesn't have to be so consistent it doesn't need to be the same thing every single day you can manipulate things around you can have a low day in carbs and then have a high day in carbs or a whole low day in caloric intake and then a high day in caloric intake last night there my mom and i to celebrate our last little bit we had some beer but we also had a whole lot of sausages so that was very high in my protein so yesterday i probably got around 200 grams of protein which is almost too much so i like to think in blocks i go in five day or week long blocks and i try to judge my macro ranges and my caloric intake in terms of averages so what I'm helping some one of my uh, online coaching uh, clients right now is that I'm suggesting that we put him on a program that he's in a caloric deficit, which is basically what I do. I'm in a caloric deficit for four to seven days, and then I spike it up with a cheat day. So technically, if you average my calories out for the week, it's pretty much going to be like I was in a slight caloric surplus. But I get the added benefits of every day cutting fat by being in a caloric deficit. So like I said in my last video, there's gonna be a whole lot of content for you coming. I don't wanna make this video too, too long because I still got about 28 days left of videos coming for you, world. Thank you guys so much for watching my channel. Thank you for following along my journey as the Hungarian experiment. Thank you for all your support. You guys are absolutely amazing. We still need about 150 to $170 the last time I checked for these growth hormone tests. If you guys wanna see what happens to my body if I do eat six to eight small meals for a whole month straight, and then let's see if my growth hormone levels decrease, then we need to get the funding because I just can't afford these growth hormone testing kits right now. They're way too expensive, unfortunately. But besides that, you guys are absolutely amazing. All your support, all the amazing comments. Like, I honestly don't even know what to say, world, but thank you. Thank you so much. I am the Hungarian experiment.